Thank the Lord for this time. I'm so grateful to God for the opportunity he gave us to remember him this morning. And pray that as I, it's not easy to speak from the word of God. Uh, it's, but it's sometimes very hard to practice it in our day-to-day -day life. Pray that I'll be true to the word and not act, but truly love the Lord and uh, rightly divide the word of God that will change my life, my heart, and the lives of dear ones who hear the word of God. A uh, few weeks ago when I spoke, I spoke about life of a Christian and how a Christian should live. And I spoke about the command that Paul gave to Timothy was love from a pure heart and love from a good conscience and finally a love from a sincere faith. Uh, today I have a different topic to speak on. In the Bible, God has commended people. He has commended his children, right? Abraham is called a friend of God. <clears throat> Moses is called my faithful servant, Moses. The man Moses was very humble, more than all the men who were on the face of earth. This is what God is telling about these individual people. For Job, God says, tell Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him on earth, blameless and upright, a man who fears God and hates evil. How about Caleb? It says, my servant Caleb has a different spirit and has followed me fully. And about Jesus, Father says, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. But today I'm going to talk about David. And what does God say? A man after God's own heart. A very different thing, right? Everybody got my servant. You know? But when it came to David, God says, a man after God's own heart. <clears throat> you all may have your own reason through the scripture to believe why God called him a man after God's own heart. I'm not here to dispute those. <laughs> those are correct. <laughs> Your thoughts are correct. But I'll take a different angle today to see why God called him a man after God's own heart. David means beloved. So if you go back to the genealogy, Judah had a relationship with his daughter-in-law, Tama, right? And they had a son named Perez. Perez begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram. And Ram begot Aminadab, that. Yeah, Aminadab. Aminadab is the father-in-law of Ir. Then Aminadab begot Nashom. Nashom was the leader of Judah who helped them move out of Egypt. <clears throat> now, Nashom begot Salmon. Remember, Joshua sent two men from Acacia Grove and sent them to Jericho secretly to spy. It was a mosaic, right? The Israel spy team. <laughs> so, so they came to the house of Harlot, named Rahab. They came. They came. Do you go to the house of Harlot? They came to the house of Harlot. <clears throat> and named Rahab, and they lodged there. They stayed there. So the king of Jericho comes over and tells them 
Rahab, please bring them out. Instead, what does she do? She takes to the roof of the house. The roof of a house is made of grass flax and hides them in the stalks of flax. So I said, so Nashon begot Sal. So I believe, scripture doesn't say that, one of the spies was Sal. I think, I don't know, because he saw Rahab fell in love with her. <laughs> okay, puzzling. And then Salmon marries Rahab. Salmon marries Rahab. <clears throat> and Salmon and Rahab had a son named Boaz. So I'm sure Boaz might have heard about all that had passed through and how Salmon came over and met Rahab. He had everything open to him, right? And this Rahab, this boss marries Ruth. But just like that, son who surrenders his life to God and takes an extreme step, which none of us would ever do, and then he marries Ruth. We all know about Ruth. Elimelech and his wife Naomi were on the journey and they went to Moab. Mahalon marries Ruth. Chilion marries Orpah. Both the sons die. Father dies and they come over. Now Boaz and Ruth had a son named Obed. And Obed had a son named Jesse. There are some genealogies we don't see there. Obed had a son named Jesse. And Jesse had a son named David. <clears throat> and God calls him a man after God's own heart. The Bible says, the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. Above all things, who can know him? I, the Lord, test the heart. And David had said later in Psalms, the Lord you tested my heart and you have tried me and you have found nothing in me. That is what David tells. Now, to understand the heart of God, let us turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. So Matthew 11, verses 28 and 29. It says, Come unto me, all ye, come unto me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. What are you going to learn from him? For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find your rest for your souls. So today I'm going to talk about our God whose heart is gentle and lowly and try to bring it into the life of David and see where he was gentle and where he was lowly. Gentleness is meekness. A humble and gentle attitude that is absolutely submissive in every offense while having no desire for revenge or retribution. <clears throat> Our Savior's heart was gentle. Many years, even before our Savior was born before the pilot, Isaiah the prophet had prophesied in Isaiah 53, verse 7, it says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet, he opened not his. He was led as a, as a lamb to slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers. He silent. So he opened not his. A gentle sin. Even before he was brought before Pilate. 
Isaiah is prophesying and say that he did not open his mouth. Matthew 27 verse 12 says, And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things these they testify against you? But he answered him not one word. So the governor was greatly marveled. A gentle savior, willing to humble himself and be submissive and has no desire for revenge. While he was in Nazareth, he was rejected. He came to Nazareth where he was brought up, and when they heard him, they were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and they brought him to the brim of the hill so that they may push him down over the cliff. And passing through the midst, he walked away. Gentle. It is a patient endurance of an unfair treatment. Mm -hmm. A gentle person is not bitter or angry and does not seek revenge when wrong. Gentle people refuse to retaliate even when it is in their position to do wrong. I believe that the gentle heart of a savior is what allows you and me to come to him. You and I were dead in our sins and trespasses. Lying in that horrible pit, unable to save ourselves, but a gentle Savior, come unto me, all you who labor and gentle. I will not look at your sins. I'll forgive your sins. He is willing to receive us. And he says, I'll remember your sins no more. And gentle in heart. In Psalm if you turn your Bibles to Psalm 18, verse 35, Psalm 18, verse 35. David says, I love you, Lord, O my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer in whom I trust. And in verse 39, he said, 35 says, your gentleness has made me great. Okay. Christ says, learn from me. He did not say, come unto me, but he says, learn from me. I am gentle and lowly in heart. Here David is acknowledged to the God that your gentleness has made me a gentle David. Truly, David was a man with a gentle heart. After Saul had Rain for two and a half years. Samuel tells him that you have to go to Gilgal and wait for seven days. And wait for seven days and I'll be coming there and you have to offer a sacrifice. So Saul goes there, goes to Gilgal, waited for seven days. Samuel did not come. So what did Saul do? He offered sacrifice. And right after he offered the sacrifice, Samuel comes. And what did Samuel say? What have you done? And then Samuel says, The Lord has sought for himself a man after God's own heart. And he has commanded him to be the commander of his people. First time we see scripture saying that God has chosen a man after his own heart. That's the first time we see David was a shepherd boy. Yeah. When Samuel came to anoint him, Samuel looked for all the seven brothers. None of them were good. Finally, David was brought in. So they poured, Samuel poured in the oil in the midst of his brothers. And scripture say the spirit of the Lord came upon David from their day forward. <laughs> Then scripture says the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and Saul had a distrusting, distrusting spirit. David was brought because he could play the harp. And when he played the harp, Saul would be refreshed and become well. 
<clears throat> then we see about Goliath. What did David do? Everybody was scared. And the men of Israel told David, hey, there is an offer. Whoever kills Goliath, the king will give his daughter as to marry, to be married to him. And the king will give him great riches. And also his father's house will be exempted from being taxes. So three offers. And I don't think David listened to any of this. But David went and killed Goliath. The woman sang. Saul has slain, slain thousands and David has slain 10,000. Saul is angry. Bible says Saul hid David from that day forward. Gentle Act 1. <clears throat> Next day, a uh, distressing spirit came upon Saul. David was playing music. What did Saul do? He cast a spear and wanted to spin David to the wall. Scripture says he did it twice and David escaped twice. How did David respond? David could have killed Saul for self-defense, but he escaped. He did not say a word. He escaped from there. Gentle Act 2. Now Saul said, okay, I'll give your daughter, my daughter to you in marriage. Cutting Saul. What did he do? And it was one time to give him his eldest daughter, Merab, as wife to David, Saul gave it to Gabriel as his wife. What did David do? You and I, what would we have done in that situation? I would have been sad, depressed, <laughs> right? I would have said all men are liars. <laughs> there is no God. I pray that something evil should happen to Saul. What did Jacob do when his father-in-law deceived him? Jacob was angry and said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Why then have you deceived me? That was Jacob's response. What did David do? Not a word. He did not say a word. He did not open his mouth. Gentle Act 3, now again, Saul wanted to give his second daughter in marriage to David. <clears throat> and uh, Saul became David's enemy continually. Scripture says, but David behaved wisely than all the servants of Saul in spite of that. Gentleness, gentle act four. There are many, but I'll just try to reduce as much as uh, so that we can finish it by 12. Uh, Saul desires to kill David. Jonathan spoke, spoke highly of David. And Saul decides not to kill David. David goes to war and kills the Philistines and come back. Saul has a distressing spirit. Again, what does Saul do? Try to pin him on the wall third time. David did not say a word. <clears throat> Gentle Act 5. David is in wilderness of En Gedi. Saul takes 300 men and went after David. Saul went to the, into the cave to attend to his needs. David and his men were staying inside the recesses of the cave. The men of David said, this is the day of which the Lord has told you, behold, I'll deliver your enemy to your hand, that you may do to him as it seems good to you. David got up, secretly cut off the robe of Saul. Now it happened after that that David's heart troubled because he had cut off Saul's tongue. And he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David restrained his servants and with these words and did not allow them to rise against Saul. David did not want to touch. Even his heart was troubled because he cut off Saul's robe. Now, I won't go into further more details. You can read on that later. But then Christ says, I am lowly in heart. 
<clears throat> in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, it says, Behold, your king is coming. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey. In John 13, it says, Jesus washes the feet of his disciples' feet. He rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel with which he was girded. A lowly man does the work of a servant. Philippians chapter 2 verses, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who humbled himself. What did David do when Saul decides to give David his older daughter, Mirabah's wife? Listen to what David said. Who am I? And what is my life or my father's family? I should be son-in-law to the king. David realized that he's not worthy to come to that position. He's a lowly man. When Saul decides to give his second daughter, Michael, to David, what did David say? Does it seem to you a light thing to be king's son-in-law, seeing I'm a poor and lightly esteemed man? David, a lowly man. When David secretly cut off Paul's robe, David called out to Saul, stooped with his face to the earth and bowed down and said, Whom do you pursue? A dead dog of me. Goliath, he is the man who killed Goliath. Nobody in Israel could kill him. But David is asking Saul, Who am I? Whom are you pursuing? A dead dog of me. When the ark was brought into, the, into Jerusalem, what did David do? He danced, right? He took off his robe, a kingly robe, and became a common man, like the ordinary people of Israel. He did not keep his position there as a king to dance. He took his earthly, his robe and his common clothes as a commoner. He danced before God and praised God. A lowly dear ones, as we read the scripture today and see the heart of God, a gentle and a lowly heart. Some of you already have that heart. Some of us have to learn to come to that position. How many times have we bitter and angry and upset about things when things don't go our way? For the Lord does not look, see as man sees. For man looks at the outward, but the Lord looks at our hearts. James chapter 3 verse 14 says, If you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast about and lie against the truth. This wisdom is earthly, demonic, and sensual. Wisdom from above is pure peaceable, gentle, and willing to heal, full of mercy and good fruits and without partiality. Ephesians chapter 4 verse says, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love for God. Paul says, now Paul I myself am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Let us today learn from our Savior every day to patiently endure unfair treatment. Let us refuse to retaliate even when it is in our position to do so. David was not a perfect man. Right? He loved gentleness from the Lord. The only thing that was against him was what he did to Uriah the Hittite. But God calls him a man after God's own heart. He learned gentleness from the Lord. And this morning, as his children, let us also desire to have a gentle and a lowly 
a heart that will humble ourselves and rejoice in what Christ has done for us in the cross of Calvary, even when it is within our families, even within our spouses, may we learn to be gentle with one another and glorify God because our Lord's heart is gentle and lowly. And with this, we may be able to touch the lives of many people in our neighborhood and the community that we are in. Let us close it. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness in our lives. We thank you, Father, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is gentle and lowly in heart, who humbled himself, did not open his mouth, but gave himself up for us on the cross of Calvary. May we, as, as we live in this world, may we all learn to be gentle and lowly, that every moment of our life we may glorify our Savior and we may draw closer to you and love you dearly and be a blessing to others. We ask this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.